Hello, welcome to the Wildline Podcast. I'm your host, Dan. This is a podcast about movies and how much money they make at the box office. Uh, so today, today was going to be a normal weekend review show, uh, but of course, Avengers Infinity War came out, and so there was, you know, last week when I did the preview show, there was a slight chance that Avengers Infinity War was going to take the all-time record. I was not a believer at all. I was thinking 225. And I was looking really good Friday morning when those preview numbers came in and the Friday matinees were being calculated. The guesstimate on Friday afternoon was Avengers Infinity War is not going to break the record. It's going to come in on like 220-ish, 230-ish, somewhere around there. Um, Then things started to change once the Friday numbers came in and they were a lot higher than expected. Then it it became pretty obvious that Avengers Infinity War was not going to play like a Force Awakens with a big uh, Saturday or Friday drop. Uh, It was looking like, even Friday night, it still didn't look like the the record was going to drop. They were thinking high, mid-230s, maybe low-240s. It it didn't become apparent that this was going to be a record breaker until last night uh, when the Saturday number came in. And I'm going to walk through these numbers step by step here so you guys can sort of nerd out with me and exactly what happened this weekend. Um, and I remember, I don't know what happened. I think I was, it was late last night and somebody on one of the forums, there's a couple of forums where there's insiders that actually work in the industry that will leak numbers way before they get to variety or Hollywood reporter. So if you know where to go look, you know, you can find those numbers pretty much right away. And the person posted, and if you're a nerd, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It's like one guy who posts all this stuff. Uh, he posted this number 83 for Saturday and it just didn't, I don't think it really computed for a lot of people because it was so outrageously high. Uh, 83 doesn't make any sense. Like it's just way too high. Um, there people were not even expecting it to hit anywhere close to 80. They were thinking like mid to high seventies, uh, when it hit that 83 number, um, it was just clear as day now that Avengers Infinity War was going to leapfrog and beat Force Awakens for the all-time best domestic opening weekend. Um, and the official number, even this morning, there was a lot of back and forth. Like Variety was saying it's not going to beat it. Deadline was saying, oh, it might beat it. Industry insiders were saying, oh, I don't know, 248, 250. It's going to beat it, but we're not really sure. What it really comes down to is what Disney says uh, and their official estimate. Because remember, these numbers are reported, um, self-reported from the studios. And if Disney says it breaks the record, you almost know for sure that it's going to break the record. And so it just came in probably about a half hour ago. But it is official. Avengers Infinity War uh, came in at 250 for the weekend, beating Force Awakens by a mere $2 million for the opening weekend record. Um, and based on what I've seen, what I've read from other people, you know, the real, the wonky nerds who dive into this stuff, that's a low ball, right? And usually a Sunday estimate for something like this uh, tends to be a little bit conservative. My guess is that when the actuals come out tomorrow, based on what I'm seeing, other people are seeing, you're looking at at least 253, 255-ish. Um, the Sunday number that they have listed here is way too low, it seems like, based on what happened Friday and Saturday night. Um, but it happens. I mean, how, oh man, it's just like, I've been following this so closely the last couple of days and I felt really vindicated on, on Friday. I was like, I knew it. I was right. Being a cynic sometimes pays off. It's not going to break the record. It's not the same hype as Force Awakens. And of course, totally wrong again. Like I was wrong on Black Panther. Um, based on the early estimates, this thing rose 20 to 5 to $30 million based on the early numbers. So it suggests a lot of things. I mean, first of all, amazing, right? Like we just had this record broken a couple of years ago and now we're to a new a sort of a new sort of pedestal uh to put the box office record on um i didn't believe that adventures infinity war was going to do it i just didn't did not feel it to me like it had the hype and based on those preview numbers that came in now let's just walk through the daily numbers so it's like it makes sense for everybody uh, just to sort of, and it will highlight how special this weekend was and how interesting the run for um, 
uh, Avengers Infinity War has been over the last few days because it's not, it does not fall into any previous patterns that we've seen before. Uh, so if we, if we were just looking at the preview numbers, these came out, if you're really interested, uh, go on deadline at like 9.30, my time at Central, uh, 10.30 Eastern, uh, right around there, and deadline will drop the Thursday preview numbers, or if you know how to follow people on Twitter, like boxofficereport.com uh, and stuff like that, they will publish preview numbers. Uh, so everybody was like, you know, chomping at the bit to figure out what this thing did Thursday night. Um, and when the number came in, it seemed honestly pretty low to me. Uh, so Ave Avengers Infinity War for the Thursday night previews, which started at 6 p.m. Thursday, uh, came in at $39 million. Now, that's the fourth highest all time, right? Um, Star Wars For Force Awakens almost did $20 million more that Thursday night. Uh, they did uh, Force Awakens did 57. Uh, last Jedi, which came out, of course, last uh, this last December, did 45. Uh, Harry Potter and Deathly Hallows, which was actually a midnight showing. I think just a single midnight showing. Uh, $43 million. Uh, so Avengers Infinity War uh, doesn't match those, only does 39. So if you were looking Friday morning, it made a lot of sense that, okay, this isn't going to break the records. You know, it's not even close to what Force Awakens did. So how the hell is this thing going to make up all that cash over the next couple of days? Um, and, um, you know, so going off of that, it just didn't seem like it was even doable. Plus, you know, you look at these other movies, Force Awakens was 30 years essentially in the making, right? Super, super hyped. So, you know, obviously going to be front loaded. You would assume something, uh, something similar for Avengers Infinity War, considering it's sort of like the fourth movie in the Avengers series. I count, I count uh, Captain America Civil War as an Avengers film. Shoot me. I, call me guilty. I just, it seems like an Avengers film to me. Uh, and this seemed like the fourth in the series. So in that case, usually those are front loaded, right? Any sort of sequels, especially later in a series of films, those movies are front loaded. People want to go out and see them for the, uh, the previews and Friday, and then it starts to drop off pretty rapidly. And that is how Deadline was projecting this film to run. But then things started to change. Uh, Friday night, it, people got wind of this thing is not dropping. Like, it's not dropping at all like Force Awakens. It's not dropping at all like Last Jedi or even Ultron. Uh, and when that Friday number came in at 106.7, uh, that includes the $39 million uh, Thursday night, uh, people started to pay a little bit closer attention. Like, oh, like, wait a second. At that point, it was then projected to fall about $2 million short of the record. And so people started to be like, all right, like, let's, uh, you know, I, obviously all the nerds are paying attention, but it's it sort of, I think, uh, you know, uh, sort of like it got people uh, invested again in this weekend, right? Because I think when those preview numbers dropped, people were like, eh, whatever, like, okay, it's going to be 39. That's amazing and awesome. But like, we were really excited about breaking the record uh, and it didn't seem like it was going to happen. But that Friday number comes in at 106. And that puts it at the second best Friday of all time. Uh, so it already made up um, a lot of ground on Force Awakens. Force Awakens had a Friday of 119. Uh, Adventures was just shy, uh, 106.7 officially, but uh, not officially, that was deadline. Uh, uh, Avengers Infinity War did 105.9, essentially 106. So it was still you know, 13 behind Force Awakens, so again, it's like, oh, it's catching up, but like, is it really going to catch up and beat this all time record? And then the, the Saturday number came in late last night and it was just $83 million. Now to put that in context, like, what does that really mean? Okay. So I heard $83 million on Saturday and I didn't really get it. I didn't really get how crazy it was. Um, but if you look at the all time Saturday records here, the previous record for a single day Saturday uh, was Jurassic World at $69 million. Avengers, uh, which obviously came out in 2012, also $69 million. Uh, Force Awakens, a little bit below that at 68, Black Panther 65. So the record's basically, you know, high 60s, no one's ever hit 70 before. Avengers hits 83. So decimates, destroys the Saturday record by a ton. And that's when it became pretty apparent that this thing was going to break the record uh and and looking at the current estimate for sunday obviously it's sunday right now so we don't know what's going to happen um but disney is estimating it to come in at 61 million dollars for the sunday that's way too low 
right? Force Awakens did 60, Black Panther did 60. This is going higher than 61. This is going 64, 65, and on higher. Uh, the way this is played is just so bizarre. Um, you would expect it to play like a sequel, front-loaded sequel. It's not playing like that. It's playing like a brand new series or original film. Like it's just not dropping at all. Uh, and that's what really, I think, confused a lot of people, confused me when the early numbers were coming in because it just didn't seem like it was even anywhere close to breaking this record. I mean, you look at that Thursday preview number and you would bet like $1,000. There's no way in hell it's going to break Force Awakens record. There's no chance in hell. It's way, it's already tw almost 20 million off, right? How's it going to catch up? But this, you know, the, the Friday night numbers and the Saturday numbers were just so strong. And then just, there's no drop. I don't even know what the Saturday jump was. I think it jumped like 20% or something like that. Um, the actual Friday to Saturday. I can't remember what the number was, but it's insane. And it's so, you know, kind of let's, you know, judge the reaction. Deadline had some good numbers here from uh, Screen Engine and Comscore's post track system. 93% uh, overall positive rating so far. Uh, beats the positive scores for uh, Age of Ultron, which was at 90. Captain America Civil War was at 88. Um, the audience was 66% guys to 34% females. I think they took this a little bit earlier in the week, so it might be a little bit skewed. Um, but that's a sort of a, it's a good starting place to sort of figure out the demographics of Infinity War. Um, that's a really skewed number towards males. Um, in terms of age, 58% were over 25 for Infinity War. Uh, with Civil War, it was only 51%. Um, and uh, uh, Ultron was skewed young. 55% was under 25. So it was male and a little bit older. The over 25 crowd was the majority here, almost 60%. Um, so I don't know. What, what does that say? It says something. It says that this was a little bit different of a film than the other big MCU uh, tentpoles. Um, it feels like to me, this was a really important film for people who grew up or were sort of maybe in their uh, 20s when MCU started. And now 10 years later, they're over 25, they're in their 30s, maybe even older in their 40s. And they felt like this was an event for them. Uh, it, it felt like this was the new Star Wars. This is the culmination of the MCU Avengers world. Oh, the entire Marvel world, you should say. And so that is why, you know, that eventness to it, as I just made up that word, it, the hype around it is abnormal. And what I'm hearing from a lot of people is they're going to see this over and over and over again. There's some people who have already seen it three or four times in the last three days. So I think here what we're seeing is with Force Awakens, there is this built-in hype that you had to see it right away. And that's why you had that $57 million Thursday preview number. With Infinity War, there was almost like, I'm going to see it this weekend, but I don't need to see it Thursday night. And so that's why we that's why we saw this fantastic Friday number. This unbelievable this Saturday number is really strange to me. You know, it blows away. So how does it think about it this way? How does a film that opens $20 million less Thursday night beat that same film two days later, not even two days later, like 36 hours later, beats that same film by how much? I got to look at the number again because I just forgot. $83 million for Avengers Infinity War on Saturday versus Star Wars for Force Awakens did 68 that makes zero sense. Like it beat it by $15 million two days later. So uh, Avengers Infinity War was not front loaded hardly at all. Um, people went out to see this in droves on Saturday. And it's not like they didn't do that for Star Wars Force, Force Awakens, but there was a feeding frenzy thing going on with Infinity War to the point where, you know, people had to see it multiple times. Um, I don't know if it was a situation where people, there's a lot of walk up business. I haven't seen these numbers yet, but my guess is that it doesn't seem really likely though, because if you think about it, a lot of the stuff is all pre sold. You know, there's assigned seats now. Walk up business just doesn't seem to be what it was 10, 15 years ago. Uh, and I wonder what the breakdown was for Avengers Infinity War, especially on that Saturday, because I would have assumed that this Saturday would have been booked solid with pre-sold tickets, 
that would be my assumption, but I could be wrong. Um, and obviously you look at the Fandango numbers and AMC numbers are like, this is the biggest seller of all time, biggest pre-sold movie of all time, that sort of stuff. Um, and so I wonder, I wonder what happened and maybe we'll have more clarity later this week when there's more data out, um, from Comscore and stuff like that. Like why this had such a strong Saturday. I mean, did it play well with kids? You know, kids are off of school, of course, but you look at those age numbers and it seemed to be that it's playing well with older people. Um, but maybe the one thing that, that comes into mind here is that like, there's nobody off of school. Uh, I think deadline quoted it as like 4% of people are off school on Friday, this last Friday. So maybe it was a situation where a ton of people wanted to see it Thursday night, but they couldn't cause they had school the next day or they're young and they can't stay out late. Uh, Friday, obviously they were doing stuff, uh, at school or whatever, or at work. And then Friday night is when it just starts to make this leap. And then Saturday, everybody's off for the most part, uh, at least from school. And that's why we see that massive jump to 83. I'm not really sure, to be honest with you. That's just sort of my quick read on it. Um, but wow, let's just take a, I'm take, I take a breath. Like, what happens? Like, this is insanity. Um, tracking was right. Tracking was saying 235 to 255. So they were kind of right on the money. And it actually went a little bit higher than in that range. It wasn't a situation like with... Black Panther, where the tracking was so off by like $30 million. Tracking made zero sense. Tracking on this started out at 170, 200, three weeks ago, but they kept moving it up. I think with Black Panther, they were just wrong. Uh, with Avengers Infinity War, uh, they were had the right range. And um, now that it has broken, it's crazy that like Disney has holds this record twice now, or three times, I guess, probably more than that. But obviously, Force Awakens and Star Wars is owned by Disney. So is Avengers, so they just broke their own record. Uh, it's amazing. It's cool to see. I, totally unexpected, I think, um, for a lot of people. I uh, I just did not have any... I had zero faith to think this was going to beat the record. Uh, and I always underestimate MCU. I don't know why. It just seems like... Because I think I don't have a lot of social connection to it. I don't go see the movies, these movies. I don't know a lot of people that do... So for me, it's like this weird phenomenon, almost alien phenomenon that I don't understand all that well. And the fact that a movie, the fact that Avengers Infinity War, which is the culmination of 10 years, but does not have the, uh, does not have the history or the cultural um, sort of backgrounds uh, of decades of hype that uh, Force Awakens had going into that opening it just blows my mind that Infinity War was able to beat it. And maybe it's just the changing business of the box office. You know, it's, it's becoming a lot more top heavy. If you look at this year's um, total box office, Black Panther takes up such a high proportion of it. I get the feeling that Avengers Infinity War is going to be the same. Uh, a big question is, how is this thing going to play out? Right. So it's at 250 now. Let's assume that that is a low ball estimate for Sunday. They're saying Sunday is going to be about 60, 61. That's way too low. So I'm just probably going to come out of like 255, let's say. 3X multiplier puts it at 765. Um, probably not going to happen. My guess is probably 2.5 multiplier. So you're looking at 670, or 637, 640. My guess is probably because the reactions have been so good. I got to take a look at Rotten Tomatoes. I've not looked at it yet. 84% Rotten Tomatoes from critics. Uh, let's see that audience score, even though it's kind of bullshit. Cinema score was an A. 93% uh, score on uh, the audience score on Rotten Tomatoes. So I have no. there's no inclination here that the legs are going to be poor. Uh, but keep in mind, Ultron, Civil War, those were positively received films uh, upon release. They had sub 2.5x multipliers. So just keep that in mind. That's a pattern that we've seen with these big tentpole MCU films. Uh, the exception being Black Panther, which had a fantastic multiplier for that type of movie. Uh, but by the way, Black Panther is at 688 right now. So I don't see it beating Black Panther. Um, but I don't know. Like going into this weekend, I didn't think it was going to beat this record. So anything is possible. Uh, in order to hit 700, uh, which would be a great milestone for this film, and let's just assume it's opening at 250, 255 because these estimates are too low, you're looking at about, about a pretty standard 2.7 multiplier. Um, I could see it doing that. I could definitely see it because the hype is so big and people are going back over and over again. 
I could see a 2.7 multiplier here and a $700 million uh, take domestically. Internationally, it's crushing too. Like, it's just outrageous. $380 million so far, um, foreign take. It's worldwide take right now, you know, two and a half days in, uh, is $630 million. Um, so a massive win. I mean, it's like, it's a grand slam of grand slams. It, you cannot underestimate this performance. It, uh, the fact that it was able to beat Star Wars is just mind-boggling to me. And the, there's certain things you could say. Star Wars opens, Force Awakens, opened in December, which is not your typical box office uh, bonanza month. I think the previous record, I don't even know what it was. I have to look that up now. That's really fascinating. I remember because like going into Force Awakens, people are like, it's December. It, it, there's a limit to what people will do in December in terms of seeing a movie. Um and so there was a lot of naysayers on that. I didn't believe that at all. Like, I thought that was bullshit. Uh, Last Jedi, of course, was 220, uh, 155. So what's crazy about Star Wars, if you look at December, and this is, I remember the, the people going back and forth on this, the previous record hol- holder for December was The Hobbit, which opened at $84 million. R- so Star Wars Force Awakens tripled that, essentially. Pretty close. So uh, total outlier, right? Um Avengers Infinity War, we're kind of in the summer season now. This is officially, Avengers Infinity War is the start of the summer movie season. We just have to sort of get that in our heads, I think. Or maybe not, I don't know. It feels like March is a massive blockbuster month now. And uh, May didn't used to be 20 years ago, but now it is. May almost seems like it's like we're full into summer. Uh, So I think it's safe to say that Avengers Infinity War is the start of the summer uh, box office season. And, um, you know, I, I think it's going to play well. I think it's going to have decent legs and MCU. I don't know. I, I thought Avengers, the original Avengers was going to be the high point of that box office, uh, run for MCU. I was like, they're never going to get higher than that. That was a once in a sort of generation thing. And of course I'm totally wrong. Um, with inflation and stuff, like maybe that changes the story. But MCU just keeps on creating these massive films that connect with people, that people are willing to go out, put their money down, and see. And it is honestly a sight to behold that a company has done this. And not just to speak from like a business perspective completely, but it's kind of awe-inspiring to see how well they have done over the last 10 years. Just this this idea that came up in 2008, let's make this Iron Man film, and then let's have this tacked on a post credit scene that kind of ties it into this Avengers thing that we want to do. And to see it grow over the last decade and to see it break this record, it's just been, um, it's been awesome to follow. It really has. And like, I have my reservations about comic book movies in general from a creative and artistic perspective. I kind of got to throw those out when I'm talking about it because... There has been no other phenomenon in in entertainment. It's not just movies. It's TV. You know, it's all of entertainment. There has not been a phenomenon like this probably since before World War II. Like, it's just like it's what it, I feel like we're in a completely different ecosystem for movies and film now and entertainment. MCU is the old school studio system coming back. Uh, you know, pre 1940s, pre World War II, into the 50s a little bit. That studio, when the studios had so much control over what people were seeing, uh, and they were just that hit after hit after hit. Um, that's probably the last time anybody in America has seen something like this. And Avengers: Infinity War is, is sort of the cherry on top. MCU controls the box office. It's as simple as that. Disney controls the box office and um, it's kind of crazy to see. And I have no idea what's going to happen with MCU. It it feels to me like they're going to continue to pump out these films uh, that are high quality entertainment and people are going to continue to pay a lot of money to see them. You know, people, somebody was asking on Reddit the other day in the box office forum, which I always hang out on a great place to go. Our slash, r slash box office on uh, on reddit if you're really interested in this stuff a lot of good articles get posted a lot of good discussion sometimes it turns into flame war sometimes flamboys get upset whatever it happens uh, but a lot of good info there someone asked 
um, you know, do we expect Ant-Man, the sequel to Ant-Man, to open over $100 million? Now, it seems kind of an odd question because Ant-Man came out, what, three years ago? I believe it was the summer of 2015. Um, I just moved down here and uh, it didn't it did OK. It opened at like 50 something and closed out at 180. Had a good multiplier. Uh, people really enjoyed the film, especially in the MCU sort of fanboy loyalist crowd. They really liked it. Had a good cinema score of A, I believe. Uh, but opened at 80, closed out at, or so opened at 50, closed out at 180. And so somebody asking now, we're, we're only three years later, hardly three years later, and somebody's asking, is this going to open to over $100 million? Now, if you're looking at its past performance, and you if you removed all of the other MCU films and all of the history I've had over the last three years. And you just asked that, you're like, ah, maybe, you know, the reception was pretty good to Ant-Man. And, um, because of those positive audience scores, you know, they're making another one. So it was obviously profitable. You know, I could see a little bit of a bump in the, in the opening weekend. If I didn't have any context, I'd probably say like, ah, you know, probably open 60, 70, maybe 80 million bucks. I would probably guess it opens at 80, closes out at like 200, 220, something like that. But now, with what's happened over the last three years and you're trying to plug in Ant-Man to this bigger brand and this bigger MCU and now Infinity War and its performance and even more important, Black Panther's performance, you say there's no doubt in my mind it opens under $100 million. I'm thinking like 120, 140 now, at least, right? It's probably 120 because it's sort of the old idiom, a uh, rising tide lifts all boats. And that's sort of what's happening with MCU. And it's really, from a business perspective, so brilliant. Uh, it is a master class in branding. And they they should write textbooks about, about Marvel and what they've done. Because they've taken, with Ant-Man and I think with Black Panther, they've taken somewhat minor characters that did not have massive followings outside the comic book world. And they've made them into cultural, mass culture icons. Uh, Black Panther a little bit more than Ant-Man, but we'll see what Ant-Man does this summer. My guess is, you know, it's going to destroy what the original Ant-Man did. But is that because it's a better film? Not necessarily. It's because the brand has become stronger. And the fact that Ant-Man is now associated with um, Infinity War, with Black Panther, with Guard, you know, the entire ecosphere of that brand it becomes a more attractive movie for people to see. It's crazy. I mean, it's just, it's so bonkers that this thing worked. And what's crazy to see is other companies try and copy it and it just doesn't work. Look at the two major examples of uh, studios trying to copy the MCU situation. DCEU is a total disaster, right? Justice League was a massive flop. Batman vs Superman is probably the worst blockbuster ever put out in the last 20 years. Awful, awful film. Superman movie, terrible. Um, and then we have, you know, the the one highlight being, of course, Wonder Woman, which is a good film. It did fantastic. Um, but I don't know if it's as good as these MCU films, to be honest with you. Like, especially the last 40 minutes of that movie. Um, it, DC just didn't work. It hasn't worked. Right? Like, if they had started with Wonder Woman and built off of that, I could see it working in four to five years since that, right? So Wonder Woman came out last year, right? So maybe in like 2022, that's when DCEU should have really kicked off. Um, but they did it backwards. They sort of uh, tried to hit a grand slam and they hit uh, a double play ball. That's essentially what happened with Batman versus Superman. They swung for the fences and hit it right to the shortstop for the double play. And so, you know, I think in the other example of... Uh, of someone trying to copy Marvel and it just blowing up in their face is the monster universal monster verse or mon whatever the hell they call it. Dark verse. Uh, and they tried to launch that, um, whole thing with, uh, the Tom Cruise mummy movie, which of course was a complete disaster and a terrible movie. Although the first, I will say the first 30 minutes of that movie is fantastic. The rest of it's one of the worst movies I've seen in a long time. So MCU is special. The brand that they have created is special. And it, it, it is the perfect example of creating, this is going to sound sort of like business school, a line of products that people love that the brand, it's, it's the sum is greater than 
all of the parts, right? Like Ant-Man in and of itself isn't, shouldn't be a $120 million opener on its own, but because it's associated with MCU, it absolutely is. And that is a masterclass in creating a, a brand and a family of products that really works for people. Not to get too, that was very businessly, business school of me. Uh, you know, I never went to business school, I studied poetry. Um, but that's why that's why MCU won and has winning and will continue to win over the next several years. Because they've created this strong brand, um, their movies, even if they're like, not mainline characters, and even if the film quality isn't amazing, all their films are going to do fantastic because it's part of this bigger brand that people connect with. Um, I'm kind of interested to see. I have not really looked at their schedule in a while. Um, I kind of wonder what they have up their sleeve besides uh, the anime. Obviously, you have Captain Marvel coming out. Um, when is that next? Something. I'm not going to look up their whole deal. Um, MCU. Okay, so we got Ant Man and the Wasp coming out in July. Um, I'm guessing definitely over a hundred million dollar opening, probably 120. Then you have uh, the new Avengers, obviously. Or sorry, Captain Marvel's coming out March 2019. Who knows what that's going to do? You know, obviously March is now a blockbuster month and has been for the last couple of years. Um, I think you're at least a hundred million dollar opening on that one. Uh, Infinity War Part Two, you know, it's not officially called that. That comes out uh, next May. This kind of the same weekend. This area, um, at least two hundred million dollar opening. Uh, maybe it beats this record. Does two sixty two seventy? I don't know. Uh, then you have Spider Man Two coming out also in twenty nineteen. So they have three movies coming out twenty nineteen, three in twenty twenty, uh, three in twenty twenty one. So it looks like they're just doing one three movies each year, which makes sense. Uh, so they're not overloading people. I don't see a decline in MCU. I just don't see it happening. I thought it was going to happen a while ago. Every time I called it happening, I've been wrong. And now I just don't see, after this performance, after Black Panther and Infinity War, these two outrageously good performances that have gone way past anybody's imagination, I just don't see them fading anytime soon. If they keep to that three-movie-a-year cycle, they're going to be around for decades, I feel like. Um, they're, they're like a brand new big studio. They're like, you know, what the biggest studios were 40, 50 years ago. Um, and so we'll, we'll keep track obviously of what, uh, what Avengers Infinity War does over the next few weekends. My guess is that it closes out. Maybe it beats Black Panther. My guess is it's gonna, probably going to fall a little bit short of Black Panther because Black Panther, there's something special about Black Panther in terms of its legs. Uh, I don't know. It just became like this cultural phenomenon that everybody had to see. Avengers Infinity War, despite the fact that it beat the record this weekend, doesn't seem like it has the same pattern of hype to it. And of course, I've been wrong a lot, so I probably might be wrong about this. Um, but my guess is it probably does not be Black Panther domestically, of course. Okay, finally. Um, congrats to Avengers Infinity War. I was wrong. We're moving on. Uh, number two this weekend was A Quiet Place. Uh, 10.6 million, 49% drop, plus 243 theaters. Per theater average was $3,000 per theater in its fourth weekend. Total take so far for A Quiet Place is $148 million. Uh, massive win, one of the biggest wins of the year. Paramount needed this. Uh, win for John Grzynski, who starred and directed. Win for Emily Blunt, and a really big win for Michael Bay as well, who helped make it happen. Um, fantastic performance. Uh, number three, I Feel Pretty from STX, $8.1 million, a 49% drop. That's pretty good. Um, per theater average, unfortunately, is very low, uh, $2,300 uh, in its second weekend. Total take so far for I Feel Pretty from SDX, $29.5 million. This one just did not hit well with people. I thought it was poor marketing. Deadline called out that it had uh, agreed with me and basically said it had a, a you know sort of a minuscule marketing budget compared to other films that were similar. If you want to open a movie big, you have to market. That's just the way it is. No one knows it exists unless you tell them it does. Uh, number four this weekend was Rampage. Uh, 7.1 million, a really big drop, mostly because I think those people want to go see Avengers. 65% drop, uh, lost 600 theaters. That didn't help. Per theater averages at the Mendoza line, just about $2,000 per theater in its third weekend. Oof. Uh, $78 million so far. That's not good for that film. I think they obviously knew that they were going to run into a brick wall with Avengers, but still, you'd want those drops to be 
no higher than 55% for a movie like that, especially in its third weekend. Maybe it'll recover next week in a little bit, but I don't know. That's, that's really rough for that film. Um, number five is Black Panther. Still in the top five after 11 weeks. Obviously, Avengers coming out helped that a bit. Uh, 4.3, 4.4 million, 11% drop. Yeah, obviously it helped. Uh, added 87, or sorry, it lost 280 theaters. Uh, still in 1,600. Per theater average was 2,600 bucks. Um, obviously week 11. Total takes so far 688. I just, I don't know if Avengers catches that. It could. It obviously could. Um, I'm, I'm getting the feeling that it won't. Um, uh, number six this weekend was Super Troopers 2 from Fox Searchlight. Uh, although it just says Fox. I thought it was Fox Searchlight because it's kind of an indie film. Uh, 3.6 million. A massive, massive 70, uh, 76% drop. Uh, added a 87 theaters. Per theater average was $1,700. Uh, total tech so far is $22 million. Uh, it is its second weekend. That is a horrific drop. That was a fanboy movie made for fanboys of Super Trooper. It's a cult film. Um, yeah, so I don't know. I don't know what... Uh, I don't know what to say about that one. It's sort of like... It felt like it did really great last weekend. But with that drop... It doesn't have any legs. It's not a flop by any stretch of the imagination. It's, a, it's performed very well. It's just at the same time... When you see it drop that high... It suggests like this was a niche film for a niche audience and no one else is going to see it. And that's not good for the numbers. Uh, number seven this weekend was Truth or Dare from Universal. 3.2 million. Universal and Blumhouse, I should say. Uh, two, uh, sorry, 3.2 million. A 59% drop, which is pretty high, even though it's a horror film. Uh, lost 650 theaters. Per theater average was $3,600. Um, 3500 uh, sorry, $35 million in its third weekend. That's a win, you know, super cheap to make, 3.5 million production budget. Uh, marketing budget was probably a little bit hefty, but I, I think it's gonna do okay. Uh, number eight was Blockers, the radar comedy from Universal. Uh, $3 million, 57% drop, lost 800 theaters, still in about 2,300 theaters. Uh, per theater average in its fourth weekend was just shy of $1,300. Uh, Blocker, Blockers has taken in, uh, let's see, $53 million so far. Um, I don't know. I can't get a good read on that, whether that's fantastic, bad, or anywhere between. I probably said last few weekends what I thought, but now I'm like, I'm seeing the 53 in its fourth weekend. It feels okay. What did game night do? Is that still out? It's not out. Um, I don't know. It seems like an okay performance. Um, obviously it's doing a lot better than I feel pretty. That was the movie that deadline compared uh, the marketing campaign to. I think the marketing campaign for blockers was like, 40 ish 50 million dollars and i feel pretty was more in like the low 30s maybe in 20s so um obviously it's going to beat that film but 53 21 million dollar production budget at least 40 million dollars marketing you're talking 70 million dollar cost just domestically it's only going to get half of the 53 i don't know I, it seems like it's an okay performance. Not a flop, but certainly not overly successful. Uh, number nine, Ready Player One, still sticking around. 2.4 million, a 67% drop. Ouch, that's Avengers. Um, lost 843 theaters. That, of course, doesn't help. Per theater average is an anemic $1,000 in its fifth weekend. Total take so far, $130 million bucks. I mean, just for reference point, Ready Player One... Massive film from Warner Brothers, from El Spielbergo, like the greatest working director in Hollywood right now, uh, especially in terms of popcorn entertainment movies. Um, I had $130 million in its fifth weekend versus Adventures, which did 250 in a single week. I mean, it's just like the world has completely changed. And especially for people who grew up in the 80s, it's kind of weird to see that, I guess. Spielberg is old. He's in his like early to mid-70s. Uh, and so his time is probably past to some degree but it is kind of there's a sort of bittersweetness that his movie's getting crushed by Avengers <laughs> uh, Traffic which looks, looks like a direct VOD movie 1.6 million um, 58% drop um, that movie's going nowhere of course okay so that's the top 10 I did a huge deep dive on Avengers breaking the all time record which is amazing quick let's do a brief what's going on limited release wise isle of dogs which is the movie we've been watching a lot because i love i love wes anderson uh terrible 1.4 million 60 percent drop 
lost a thousand theaters. I don't know what they were thinking. It's like they pumped it out to 2000 theaters and realized right away, like, oh, this is a bad idea. This is not working. Uh, dropped it down to a thousand now. Uh, per theater average is at 1400. Total take so far for Isle of Dogs is $27 million. That's not terrible. It's not a flop. Uh, I expected that to break out a little bit more and hit like 50 on higher. Um, it didn't happen that way. So I don't know. There must be a mis uh, a sort of disconnect between the audience and the film outside the major cities is what I'm guessing. Um, what else is going on? That's mostly it. The, the, the one other call it, two other call outs. Uh, Disobedience uh, from Bleecker Street opened up in New York and Los Angeles uh, about a lesbian who's also raised as an Orthodox um, Jewish person, goes back to their Orthodox Jewish neighborhood. Um, Rachel Weiss, Rachel McAdams, uh, a lot of buzz at Toronto last fall. Uh, Bleecker Street uh, picked it up. Uh, did is doing pretty well upon release. Now, if you read the trades and stuff, you're like, oh, this is a fantastic performance, $48,000 per theater. But it's just New York and Los Angeles. That's actually not that fantastic for an art film that wants to break out. My guess is this thing's going nowhere. Um, what What is the audience for a film like that? I, I mean, L New York and Los Angeles are, you know, they have prominent Jewish populations, so obviously it's going to attract that group of people. Uh, outside those cities, I just don't see it playing that well. Uh, but you can't scoff at the 48K per theater. I mean, that's pretty good. Um, but for something to break out, Steve Jobs did like 130K per theater in its first two weekends. And that didn't break out at all. So you never know. You never know with these limited releases and high per theater average what that really means. My guess is this one's just going to play big in those cities uh, and then kind of dissipate after that. Uh, the other one is Kings uh, from Orchard. Um, I don't know what happened with this. Uh, Halle Berry, Daniel Craig about the L.A. riots. It seemed like it, it was a good film to make and put out now. Um, from the director of Mustangs, which is oh, just, it's a Turkish film. Uh, that was her first film that she did. Go see Mustangs. If you're into art films, just watch that movie. It is a classic, a uh, classic film. One of my favorite films of the last decade. Uh, this was her second work. Uh, apparently, it's a complete creative disaster. Everybody hates it who sees it, uh, including audiences here. I only did uh, compare this to Disobedience. Uh, Kings did um, $800 per theater this weekend on 214 screens, or theaters, I should say. Disaster. Um, nothing really else to call out. Let the sun shine in. I don't know what that is. Did okay. And it's limited release 20 K per theater. Okay. That's mostly it. Let's uh, talk a little bit about what's coming up and we'll close out the show. Um, obviously adventures is going to rule for the next few weeks. Uh, bad Samaritan comes out. Uh, I have no idea what that is. No one has any idea what that is. Overboard comes out next weekend, uh, with Anna Ferris. um, I terrible. Uh, I've never even heard of the distributor before. Pantheon, Pantheon. I could, I don't know. I guess they're brand new. The only one to speak of really coming out next week is Tully from Focus Features. It's a Diablo Cody script, who of course was the It Girl by about ten years ago. Jason Reitman directing. Uh, Charlie's there on. They're all sort of working together again. They have the their. They also did what was the adult fiction, young adult fiction or something, whatever that movie was, nobody saw it. Nobody's going to see this. The marketing has been terrible for it. Uh, it does have, uh, it does have that, um, what's her McKenzie Davis from uh, halt and catch fire. And it's so, like, you know, it looks interesting. It looks, I would love to see it. If you're into arty films that are sort of edgy, I'm sure it's going to be entertaining from a business perspective. It is a non-starter. There's no audience for this on a mass mass level zero i don't know why that you would even green light it why are you pushing it out to a th 1200 theaters it's just gonna fall flat, flat on its face like what do you what are they thinking over there like totally to me is direct to netflix get a really good marketing campaign to route it helps that brand out a lot to have a movie like that or hbo hbo would love to have a film like that to prepare on there there's just not a space for a movie like this at the multiplex anymore this is like it's a popcorn world now Right, like it's Avengers making two fifty in a single weekend. Where does Tully fit into that at your local AMC? It doesn't, and so I just am confused as to what Focus Features is trying to do with this movie. Um, so that's May fourth, May eleventh. Breaking in, uh, I have high hopes for Breaking in. Comes out on, I guess they're saying Mother's Day, Mother's Day weekend. 
Um, because Mother's Day is a Sunday, isn't it? I could be making that up. Um, this one's gonna break out. I just everything in my gut says PG thirteen thriller. Um, looks like a strong cast, really interesting sort of like pot boiler thriller. I don't know, people. I don't know. These movies do well for some reason. I just it looks super entertaining and fun. Um, so I think breaking breaking in is gonna do well May eleventh. Life of the Party comes out also on May eleventh. Um, Melissa McCarthy, Jillian Jacobs. Uh, I don't know much about this one. It's Warner Brothers, PG-13 comedy. I have not seen a ton of marketing on it, so I don't think it's going to do all that well. And then we get in deeper into May, and we're talking Deadpool 2 comes out May 18th. Uh, Solo comes out May 25th, and then we're also deep into summer 2018. Um, what an exciting weekend, folks. Thanks if you guys have been listening. I really appreciate it. Um, I don't, I'm don't. i not really great at social media. It's just not one of my things. I don't really do my Twitter anymore. If you do want to have a question or comment or a suggestion about the show, shoot me a note on the uh, YouTube comments. That's what I actually read. So thanks for listening, guys. Uh, this has been the Wildline Podcast. <laughs>